Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're building on the basics from last time and we're talking about a thing they call the shoulder plate. In the last video in this series, we talked about the basics of moving the golf club backwards and forwards away from the ball and keeping the shaft angle. Again, understanding that the weight of the golf club is always wanting to change the shaft angle and you're going to have to apply pressure to the grip end in order to keep the shaft angle. Because of the way we're actually going to swing the golf club using both hands and both arms, what's actually happening is the golf club is moving around an axis which is more or less in the middle of the chest between both shoulders. So you are not only going to be moving the golf club away in its original angle, you will also be lifting it up onto the shaft, uh, onto the shoulder plane as we call it. The shoulder plane is basically the center of your golf swing and because the golf club is at an angle to the ground, you are going to have to turn your shoulders at the same angle or as close as you can get to the same angle to the ground. And this is one of the reasons that when we start in the address position, we start with a certain spine angle. And this spine angle, if you look from the camera down the line, is more or less 100 degrees to the angle of the shaft. So that means if I had a longer golf club, I would have to stand more upright because the shaft angle is flatter. If I had a shorter golf club, I would actually have to take more spine angle in order to get the 100 degrees to say a wedge, for instance. It's also critical just for your balance to make sure that your weight stays on the middle of your feet evenly distributed and you don't get yourself kind of tilting forward and a lot of times it's just that kind of feeling of the duck's ass as they say pushing your bum back out of the way and that will actually kind of level up put a bit of weight back so that your shoulders can actually lean forward. But one of the main problems for the golfer is keeping the so-called shoulder plane. And the shoulder plane is basically a rotation of your shoulders with the feeling, and again I'm saying the feeling here, that your lead shoulder is turning down towards the ball. Obviously you won't get it actually pointing at the ball. Your sh lead shoulder will be parallel to the line that the club had at address. So you can actually see that a little bit with the stick that I've put into the ground here, that as I rotate back away from the ball, I'm trying to get this lead shoulder down and the trail shoulder back. Now, how easy that is to do will also be dependent on your hip rotation, but we'll get into that another day. What I want you to be thinking about today or understanding better is the way that your shoulders are going to actually get into this angle. Because if you are taking the club back and lifting it, but your shoulders are moving in the wrong angle or plane, then that's not going to help you at all. So the first thing to understand in the shoulder plane is this is not a normal rotation that you're doing with your shoulders. A normal rotation would be this basically a flat rotation, almost parallel to the ground that you're standing on, a little bit like a baseball player might actually do when they are taking their bat back. But when we are swinging a golf club, because of the angle that we have at the address between the golf club and the ground, in order to keep the club moving on its arc, on its plane, we have to get the shoulders moving down. First the lead shoulder, and then the trail shoulder. And the way that we do this is by combining two movements. One of them is the simple rotation of the shoulders around your spine, around the central axis. The second is side bend. Side bend is something that you are doing in your upper body, mainly in your so-called thoracic spine. And what's happening is as you're rotating, you are bending. There is a definite bowing of your body as you rotate. 
and that is helping you to get the shoulder down. Now, as I was saying, you won't be able to get the shoulder absolutely down pointing at the ball. On the contrary, it's going to be more kind of parallel to the original shaft plane, which you can see with the stick there. As you change direction then, the shortening of your left side, your lead side for obviously a right-handed golfer, will then extend and your trail side will contract, causing the lead side to extend. Now for a lot of you, this is gonna actually feel uncomfortable because you're stretching muscles out in the backswing in your trail side, and you're stretching muscles out in your lead side in the downswing. And the muscles that are resisting this stretch will obviously try to stop you from doing it. A simple drill every day of just simply trying to kind of slide your hands down your side to around about knee height is all you really need to kind of train your vertebrae to allow this to happen. But again, like all things, it might well be that you're a little bit stiff having spent most of your daytime hours actually looking in a computer monitor sat at a desk and therefore getting on a golf course and expecting your upper body to make all these kind of contortions is maybe asking a little bit much of it to start off with. But most certainly, in order to get the shoulders on plane, you have to be physiologically capable of going into side bend whilst rotating. That means, gentlemen, two things at the same time. Obviously, the ladies won't have a problem with that, but it's really multitasking on a very high level. As you start the rotation around your central axis, you are allowing the lead shoulder to tilt down towards the ball, the stomach muscles and back muscles contracting in your lead side, the stomach muscles and back muscles extending in your trail side. As you change direction, the lead muscles are expanding, relaxing, the trail muscles are contracting as you rotate the whole time, trying to keep this axis, this point in the middle of your chest between your shoulders over the ball. Now, obviously, if you do that correctly, that is going to help your arms up, but it's not going to be enough. You will have to actually lift your arms as you're taking the club back, keeping, as we said before, the shaft angle as you do it. But again, before we get into too much kind of complete swing theory, I'm trying to take you kind of step by step through the golf swing. So if you think of the first step last week, uh, we were trying to keep this angle of the golf club, turn this triangle away from the ball, get now the lead shoulder down, the trail shoulder up, and allow your arms to come up in front of your chest. You can see how I'm taking the club back over this line here in front of me. I'm not allowing the weight of the club to carry it down behind me, and I'm not picking the club up with my arms before I rotate the shoulders. In fact, a good feeling to begin your golf swing is of the lead shoulder coming down, of these leads, of the lead side contracting and pulling that shoulder down. If you want to get into real kind of fine data, it really isn't the lead shoulder which is starting the swing. It's almost kind of a bump off your lead foot, but most people won't even realize that. And it's not really anything that you want to be thinking about at this stage in the swing. How can you practice that? Well, quite simply, cross your arms across your chest, go into your address position, and then get the shoulder coming down one after another. I would also recommend you getting some kind of feedback from your head if you're staying centered. In a golf swing, because of the bowing of your, your thoracic spine, there will be a slight dipping of the head in the swing. However, there shouldn't be too much movement of the head right and left. Now, obviously the, the head can't do anything about it, it's sat on your shoulders. 
but if your shoulders are moving correctly, then your head will stay still so you could stick a camera on a tripod or get your mobile out and film yourself and see whether you're actually doing this. I actually get my students to stand next to a door frame with their head on the door frame and make the movement against the door frame and that way if they're banging their face on the door frame then they know they're not doing something correct. I think sometimes the brutal methods are the better. All these carrots are no good, get the whip out. Hope this helps you. I'll be back next time talking more about how the hips get integrated into this movement. But you've got basically shaft plane sorted now. Now you're going into shoulder plane. And so you've got two of the biggest elements of the golf swing for you there. If it helps, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Um, I will be back next time with the next video. Big, big shout out to all of my patrons who support the channel so generously. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your support. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.